Hello, welcome to the Charmed Life Podcast. My name is Trisha Carr. I am your host. I am a spiritual teacher, a multidimensional medium and channel, animal communicator, and a clinical hypnotherapist. And I am so excited about this episode today because while this podcast is about metaphysics and mysticism, it's really about helping us to be able to live that true soul purpose, to embody it, to integrate it, to be on that frequency of the soul purpose and the authentic self. And that to me is spirit becoming nature. And this episode talks a lot about that and demonstrates it with my beautiful, wonderful guest, Kelsey Kinsey White. We are dear friends and colleagues. And Kelsey is a soul emergence guide and authenticity mentor. She talks to us in this episode about the voice, really, is what we talk about a lot, about the resonance with the voice and the embodiment that the voice offers. We talk about inner communion, and we also talk about light language, and particularly as it concerns a particular workshop that Kelsey has coming up, and I'm really excited about that. And so without any more delay, welcome to this conversation between myself and Kelsey Kinsey White. And so here she is. Welcome for the second at least time. Uh, there's another time that we recorded an episode and there were some tech issues with it. So I didn't get to release all of it. But we may do that after this episode because I know everybody is going to just eat up the love, the light and the glory that is Kelsey Kinsey White. So welcome to the show again, Kelsey. I'm so excited to chat today. Me too. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> well, let's dive right in and let's talk about some of the work that you're doing. Um, you have a, a workshop coming up that I'm so freaking excited about. So let's talk about the work that you're doing or your journey. Um, just let's get us, get into, you look at you're already channeling. If you see her swaying, if you're watching the video, it's because she is above all and the most aligned sense, she's a channel and swaying tends to come with the channeling. <laughs> So Kelsey, um, let's talk about the work that you're doing right now. Yeah, um, I'm becoming more of myself. <laughs> that is that is the that's work. A, that's a lot of work. <laughs> that's hard. Not for you, work. maybe as much as me. I can't speak to yours, but I can say. <laughs> I think it's I think it's a lot of work for everyone. Yeah. But um, mm -hmm. but yeah, that is the work, and so that's what I'm really. That's my heart, I guess, right now is helping other people do that work as well, and so just acting as a guide and an activator, really. <laughs> I'm learning more about myself. We mentioned human design and my role that I play in that beautiful vision of everybody becoming themselves and um, contributing to this beautiful ecosystem of individuation, all collaborating and contributing to this greater vision. And so as I become more myself, I find it is my heart to yeah, guide others along that path. <laughs> so soul emergence is what I call it, really this mm -hmm. um, union of spirit and matter of of mind, heart and body and um, deconditioning, a lot of deconditioning, repatterning, reprogramming and really just becoming the witness to ourselves and, um, and working through all of those patterns and um, seeing how we can shift them to really embody who it is we are. And for most of us, all that, not for most of us, all of that exists already innately. It's just about remembering it. And so, you know, talking about tools and techniques, mostly introspection and reflection and inner communion types of practices um, is what I am putting out there in the world to sort of activate and assist others um, on their journeys. And so um, I'm, Let's see, I'm active on Instagram. That's primarily like where I focus my community. And, and I have um, I have one on work, one on one work that I offer through my website. But what I'm really trying to do is build community where we can all do this together and journey through this together <laughs> in um, in a really sacred container. And so I have what I'm really working on this year is a membership platform um, where we can all journey through that together. And I'm really funneling all my all my work into that membership platform. Um, and trying to build that sacred community where we can all unpack together and just remember who it is we are and be it. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's that's really beautiful work. So I would love to talk about a few pieces of that. Let's let's start with that inner communion piece mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. 
as um, probably the foundation for remembering who it is that you are and yes. learning more about um, who it is that you are? I use the word inner communion mm -hmm. because I think it's just kind of expansive and there's yeah. you know an infinite number of ways that we can develop our own personal practice of inner communion and that includes these types of self-reflection quality time with the inner being you know for most of us that would be meditation right that word meditation um, but different meditative types of techniques to get into communion um, and to embody um, our fullness and to build relationship with self. That's what it is, building relationship with self. Mm -hmm. In my work, I talk about the source soul self being, which is just another word for the triune being or um, you know, the, the sacred trinity, um, because we are all connected by the one energy that is source, expressing through these individualized sort of rays or essences, if you will, that are even further particularizing and um, refracting and fractalizing into these individuated identities. And so really building relationship with that full spectrum of self so that we can um, commune and, and emerge as these holistic beings, these, the spirit and form. Um, and so that's what inner communion is for me is that holistic approach to my, my totality <laughs> and all of that. <laughs> it's almost like, well, so Kelsey and I are just about finished with the energy intensive program uh, that Crystal and Compton and I put to, you know put on together as teachers. And Kelsey was the manager of the space and coach and teacher in the space as well. And we did talk about the rays or the, the and we also talked about the subtle bodies. Yes. And as you're talking about that inner communion, I almost feel like that coalescing of those subtle bodies, the, the layers of the subtle bodies, or if you think about them like rays, those different mm -hmm. layered frequencies of the omnidimensional being, yeah. and that they, they, that they all get to come together and shine through any and all equally. Like the, if you want to put it in these ideas of 3D or something like that, even the 3D aspect of the being is shining through the 7D, 7D aspect of the being, vice yeah. versa, yeah, in a, in a balanced way. Yeah, but it's all the same being. It's all the same essence. It's all the same frequency. And so how can we build relationship with the, the entirety and all of the different beautiful facets of form and honoring the form that they take and the specific role they play within the ecosystem? And so by doing that within ourself, within our own individuation, within our own system of consciousness, we are bringing that wholeness and that healing to the greater ecosystem <laughs> that we inhabit, which is you know, humanity, the collective consciousness of humanity, the mm -hmm. planetary ecosystem that is Gaia and, you know, beyond that, even cosmically or universally. And so it's really embodying that holistic approach of building relationship. Mm -hmm. um, because when we do it for us, we do it for the world, you know, and that's how we contribute. And so for folks who are, let's say, maybe let's speak to some thought around a person who is newer to having an, a deeper inner communion practice, whether we consider it consistent or deep. And then also to someone, again, for a lack of a better way to think about it, we are linear focused beings, we tend to be. <laughs> but if it's like intermediate or just anyone who has, you know, I have my practice, I have my meditation practice, but I'm ready to up level, jumpstart, kick into something deeper. And, you know, it's the path is a spiral. So even if you're on your path and you have this profound work, at some point you're going to want to learn more and you're going to want to challenge more. And so you'll start to manifest patterning that wants to be repatterned or shifted and up-leveled. Mm -hmm. So how do you speak maybe to first to the, the person who is like, okay, I want some of that and I don't really know how to get it right now? <laughs> Let's start mm -hmm. with that. Um, well, building a sacred practice for yourself, like we talked about sort of the meditation, the inner communion, the, the cornerstone of, um, of that experience, I guess, of this practice of holistic of communion with self, it, it we have to build relationship with ourselves. <laughs> we have to committed in a committed way. Yeah. Um, and for some of us, that's very disciplined, maybe very ritualistic and rigid. And for others, maybe it's more, more flowy and more moment by moment, but really committing to building relationship with ourselves and our authenticity with our hearts. 
and with our minds and with our bodies and with our emotions and all of the things. Um, and so I think that that starts from just um, really with quality time, just as if you were building any relationship with a person, another person and other, um, you have to spend quality time with them to get to know them, to um, discover them, you know, to explore them. And so you, you set up time to just be with that person. You go on dates or you have, you know, experiences together. And so really just um, kind of viewing ourselves in that way and just setting up space, carving out time to just be with self and just to experience self and all of the facets and nuances therein. And that could be something as small as like a five minute deep breathing experience. You know, I wake up and I'm just going to sit in stillness and breathe just and be with myself, you know, or it could be a more, um, you know, dynamic meditative experience. Um, does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to, uh, <laughs> to jam on it. I don't think it was a question. <laughs> I think it was a, it was like a, it's like jazz. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the, the pianist just sets up some key, some uh, yeah. chords and then the bassist starts going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, I love what really stuck out to me. I think that is kind of so helpful as a human is the word commitment. Yeah. If you can make a sacred commitment to yourself, mm -hmm. then things start to fall into place. And we've all done that. If you are a parent, you made the commitment. If you are in a relationship, whether it's a partnership or a friendship or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, you or or just your career or your job, like you've made a commitment. Mm -hmm. And if you if we kind of start with that, it gives us something to sort of chew on, something to bite into and something to focus on, because that's that's really if we can focus on something, become mindful of it, which is, again, mindfulness is the is that portal into the sacred being, you know, into that inner communion. If we can do that, then it really helps us. And so whatever commitment you can do, and this is why in my experience, consistency is such a, a, a much more profound catalyst than anything else when it comes to setting up your inner communion practice or your meditation, whatever it is, because the consistency starts to retrain the energy. It starts a new pattern. And that will be that will be much more impactful than something like, okay, I meditate four hours a day starting tomorrow when you've never done it. Like that's not gonna work in the energy um, yeah. as easily as even that five minute sacred breathing, I think. Mm -hmm. And so commitment, I, I feel like while that feels heavy in some aspects, it's also, it's comforting. <laughs> I think it could be really comforting. Yeah. Well, and I'm, I'm finding in my own work, um, I like to be more fluid. Yeah. So there's something I do every, like, I actually have, I have things that I do every day, but I, mm -hmm. I, I started actually, um, with doing something every morning, like, wait, okay, I'm just going to start my day off like this and I'm going to yeah. prime my day. And that works for me, but I find that my morning experience, I make it a lot shorter. It's actually shorter. And I, that surprised me just, um, cause I thought, okay, I'll just get it all in and I'll get all juiced up and jazzed up and primed for my day. But I actually, I like, I don't know, my commitment and my consistency is almost like fluid throughout the day. I have my yeah. little priming in the morning. And so I, I, for me, like the I was approaching it from a really disciplined place. Like I have to do this for 30 minutes every morning, starting at this time and da, 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 da. And for me, that just didn't, it just didn't feel quite right. I wanted more. I wanted more room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so my commitment, I'm, there's commitment, but the, the, I don't know, it's not as disciplined as I thought it would be. It's not as patterned as I thought it would be. And so that's part of me finding what works for me and my energy and the way I like to flow. And so uh, I like the word commitment because I can be committed in any moment. Yes. And so like, that's how it kind of manifests for me. And um, with just that mindfulness portal of like, okay, I feel myself slipping. How can I just recommit to myself in this moment? And how can I just bring in that mindfulness? How can I bring in this self-reflection? How can I breathe and create connection within my own beingness so that I can approach this next situation, whatever it is. Or how can I just enjoy myself in this moment? Maybe I'm not slipping, but how can I just, oh, I have a moment of quiet. How can I just experience myself and my soul in this moment, you know? <laughs> so I, I like the word commitment a lot because I, yeah, it feels more 
it, it doesn't even feel heavy to me. It feels more expansive because I could be committed in any moment. <laughs> right. Well, you know, it's interesting because you think that the word commitment, if it seems heavy, I think we're just looking at some other ways that it's been utilized mm -hmm. by force or by, by forcing will. But the root of it, C-O-M, it means to be with. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, like com companion, mm -hmm. compadre, compassion, you know. Mm -hmm. So it means I'm it means to be with. It just means mm -hmm. to be whole in a sense or to recognize the holistic or holy quality between two entities or aspects. Mm -hmm. And so it really is really very beautiful. I think we all like different measures of fluidity and rigidity or ritual. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, so you're married, I'm married, so you got married, that was a commitment. And then maybe some people they're like, well, we have date night every Saturday, not without fail, like, because I want that benchmark of the time to, you know, have a certain expression of our partnership. And then maybe in other partnerships, it's just like, well, sometimes we're, you know, we have Tuesday morning together or whatever, you know, it's just, it's right. where it is. But the jumpstart of the marriage or the com the commitment ceremony, yeah. <laughs> even, I think we all benefit by some of these same patterns of that, that work together, which is so cool because while we are individuals, we have some similar overlapping patterns that reminds us that we're actually one. And so I almost feel like when I started my journey in this vein, I probably, it was like having a child because the first several months or weeks were, were like so deep and dedicated. Not that they're not now, because if you have a child, when the child is 17, you're still deeply dedicated. But there was something about that where there was this deep immersion at the beginning. And I was, I was so hungry to know yes. and to feel <laughs> and to experience. And it goes on, but it's, it's, the immersion is is slightly different and it ebbs and flows in, mm -hmm. in these different ways. Yeah, I feel the same way. Like the, mm -hmm. yeah, there's this leveling sort of and this yeah. piece. Um, and yeah, it just becomes second nature. And then, mm -hmm. and then there's the ebbs and the flows and then you're like a deep dive into something else, you know, <laughs> but then it levels. But um, I, I didn't even put together the, the, the root words of, of commitment or and and communion that's why I call it communion yeah. I guess you know like I never even put that together <laughs> yeah but yeah inner communion because it's much more expansive and I guess that is my phrase that emulates that commitment <laughs> well yeah and communion what a beautiful word because the yeah. com is to be with and then you means to be one and mm -hmm. so it's to be with is to be one and mm -hmm. ah I'm getting chills <laughs> 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 All right. So the second part of my jazz riff that I pitched to you was, and then when you move into a place where you have the commitment and you're doing, and you have your inner communion practice, but it's time to level up or, or start a new pattern or mm -hmm. stoke it in some way. Let's, let's talk about that. Let's express around that. Let's you <laughs> express around that a little bit. Well, for me, you know, creation is infinite. It's eternal. Evolution, therefore, is infinite and eternal. And so there's no, um, as you say, there's no arrival. There's no destination to becoming ourselves. And so I'm always, um, I, I guess I just lead my life with this lens of self-exploration and discovery. There's always more to unpack. There's always more unfolding. There's always more blossoming and emerging. And so I think, um, I think, you know, if you're, if you're just living from that lens, there's always more, there's always more, like we live in an abundant world. And so just saying yes to that exploration and just saying yes to going deeper into just following those little nudges. Um, I really like to play. I like to explore. And so if something lights me up, I'm like, okay, well, let's try that. Let's see if it matches. Let's see if it feels good. Let's, um, let's try that new technique or that new tool. Um, yeah, let's see if it can be amended to, to and shaped to work for me. Or maybe I just try it a couple of times and it doesn't land. And so I move on to the next thing. Yeah. <laughs> so just being really exploratory, mm -hmm. um, always having my eyes open to seek externally what's inspiring me and internally what, what is literally coming through me, what wants to move through me. Um, and so I'm always just exploring and deepening my, my practice, just seeing where it leads me, following the flow. Um, yeah. <laughs> and you are also 
So you are an intuitive reader. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you're doing that in your soul emergence practice or not, but it is a skill. Mm-hmm. It is it is um, an ability and a skill that you have honed and opened for yourself. Mm-hmm. And then you're a channel as well. And um, vocalization and vocal resonance yeah. is is a very important fundamental way that you shine your gifts and your light and that you actually channel. So let's That's start talking about some it. of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Huh? That's one of the major areas where I've been recently um, unfolding, exploring, blossoming, <laughs> if you will, yeah. Um, is, yeah, deepening that practice um, of, uh, I don't even know what I'd call it, intuitive vocalization, sacred vocal work. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's kind of been a huge part of my journey. And then that, yeah, that's something I'm working on right now, working, growing through and just uh, seeing where it leads. So I'm doing a workshop. We want to talk about the workshop. Yeah. Let's talk about the workshop. It's coming up real soon. Really soon. Is it like two weeks? Um, About two weeks or maybe, maybe a week, depending on when we publish this. So the dates, I'll just say, yeah, the dates we're talking 2020. Um, yeah, so August, I gosh, I want to say it's the 29th and the 30th. It's, it's the, the last, last weekend, yeah. Sunday of August. I think that's the 29th and the 30th. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's coming up really shortly. And it is kind of, I was going to say, it's kind of the culmination of everything I've been kind of exploring for the last two years, I would say, um, with regard to vocalization, sacred sound, um, light language, and um, just toning and tuning and really communing with my my voice as an instrument and the throat chakra. And um, really, yeah, just deeply diving into that um, as part of, or as, a, as an inner communion practice, as an embodiment practice really is what I see it as this way to, um, I think embodiment, if that makes sense, I don't know if I can articulate this right, but um, I don't know, in in the spiritual community, in the industry, in a lot of where we've been, and I think this is just a natural part of human evolution, but we've been really exploring sort of the energetics and consciousness and, you know, this astral and this imaginal intuitive space. And um, I think the next step in where we're all sort of headed is this, how do we implement that? How do we bring that Mm -hmm. through into the physical, into the material? How do we create that communion, that union, that meld, you know? Um, And so embodiment work, where we are inhabiting the both and the state of the non-physical, the frequency, the energy, and also creating space for that to be anchored and experienced and channeled through the physical instrument, I think is, you know, that's, that's where we're headed. And so that kind of playing with that in my own world has been super powerful and impactful for me and just my own, my own emergence and embodiment. (laughs) Right. And as we, you know, in the energy intensive, the way that we looked at the rays or the chakras and the way that human design talks about the energy centers is that the throat chakra is the one that is the embodying chakra. So all of the energies of all of the other energy centers run through the the throat in order for them to be manifest or embodied or integrated. They all, all roads lead to the throat. (laughs) And I mean, and the throat is about expressing as well as receiving so it is what we're bringing in as well but it is um it is that um yeah that that give and take Mm -hmm. and so you well so i it's it is the instrument i think that really of embodiment when we use our voice we are embodying we are activating the body in the tonal frequencies and there's just it's kind of a neat trick (laughs) Like there's nothing more to do. Um, really you need, so let's talk about light language because maybe some people's ears peaked about that. I really love, well, I think you actually even shared on the, the program when you were on before that as a child, were you in some um, evangelical Christianity that actually had some speaking in tongues? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I think that's cool to be able to move forward or even just to see, you could say, oh, I had this activation as a youth. And yeah. while I may have taken it into something that is not as traditional for that paradigm, mm-hmm. it's important to me still. So anyway, I think it's really awesome. Yeah, I love, well, I think um, when I first like met you and connected with you, I think what really like, sparked that connection was your stories of coming from organized religion and 
um, you know, opening up to more of the, and Crystal too, because Crystal came mm-hmm. from organized religion and she was the first person that I ever heard the word like metaphysical. And I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> you know, and it was like this blend of um, spirit and, and God and science and all of these things. And I was just like, oh my God. And so when that sort of, you know, initial kind of awakening or expansion occurred, I, I had to do some redeeming, as you've said in your mm-hmm. own stories with some of the some of the words and things from religious, you know, from organized religion. And I I think I'm in a really great place now where I can honor not even just the religious background that I came from, but all of these different, you know, religions that exist in the world and the the beautiful thread that unites them. Like it just, I can just see how it's all connected, you know, and that's Mm -hmm. so fascinating. And so I've done some of that redeeming. And so, yeah, my journey with light language as it's typically called in the spiritual community um, began with, um, with church and speaking in tongues. <laughs> and that's something we did. Um, and I've honestly, I've never stopped doing it. So even when I was so funny in my, you know, awakening in the beginning of my journey, my spiritual journey, um, when I was grappling with what is God and what is spirit and what are all these things and where do I fit into it all? I was always still praying to God, you know, (laughs) I did that too. Always still speaking in tongues. I was like, I don't know where this fits, but it just feels right. And it doesn't feel wrong. (laughs) And so I'm just, I kept praying. I kept praying even in the Christian language. Cause I was like, well, I just, it feels good to me. It's, it's, that's always been mine anyway. You know what I mean? Like my sacred prayers spoken in my being was always mine. And so I was ending prayers within Jesus name still, because it worked for me. And and sometimes I still do because I love the name of Jesus. I love me some Yeshua. That's so powerful what you just said. It was always mine anyway. Yeah. And I think that's why some of organized religion didn't work for me because I was like, no, this is mine. I own this, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was always doing it. I was always speaking in tongues or speaking in light language. And um, I really, I'm so excited about the workshop because I think I teach about it. I experience it. I want to educate people about it in kind of a different way than I've seen done before. So kind of as you use the word, like, um, I think you said old paradigm, maybe I was just Mm -hmm. getting into that with. No, I think I said it. Yeah. (laughs) I almost feel like light language is kind of outdated old paradigm <laughs> like right. let's expand let's go deeper let's un- let's uncover more and so that's really maybe, what the workshop is about for me I think maybe light language was a way to begin to redeem something from mm-hmm. what yeah. maybe a lot of western culture understands as evangelical yeah. you know kind of speaking in tongues so maybe that was the first grab into bringing it in yeah. for some of us and yeah and also like for speaking in tongues in the church had had some specific it, I mean it was a bit rigid at least the way it was presented for me so I actually stopped because mm-hmm. th- there was so much um it was just my path obviously I mean the, yeah. the big, broader perspective but there was so much um a, I want to say it, lightly use the word abuse but for, for a lack of a better word and there was just uh the, I, the my boundaries were crossed with it mm-hmm. so I would be in, there was one time or two when I was in church and someone spoke out in tongues and the way that it's spoken of in, in acts is that there is always someone to interpret the tongues into like the language of man. Mm -hmm. And so someone, it was, this didn't, this was just me witnessing it. Someone's had a, had a message in tongues and then, then no one was there to interpret. And so the pastor or whoever was leading the worship stood up and said, well, that was not of God then because no one, there was no one to interpret it. And I was like, so crestfallen. I was like, I'm still injured by that. You know what I mean? Even though I witnessed it. And I was like, first of all, how can you even say that? What if the person who had the interpretation is the one who who, who did the failing? Yeah, exactly. So, but it more or less, I mean, not that it's like humiliated the person or judged the person right there in front of everyone. And then also like other little things where it was like, you must speak in tongues for at least 30 minutes every day. And I was like, well, that's not, Yeah, (laughs) it was just all these like boundary crossing with it. And now when I do it, because I am redeeming it back and I'm opening it up, I feel so vulnerable. I feel so naked. Yes. Yes. (laughs) You're like, yes, perfect. (laughs) Get naked, yo. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but so I, I'm sure, I imagine, because I, I can't wait for the class, that any of that old stuff that you, it must, I think that that is making, that is an issue that we have in sometimes in different times of our spirituality where we want something to fit into a, an, an inner mold, you know, fit into the inner planes in the exact way. So it's almost like we're trying to then project 3D onto 7D again, mm-hmm. just as an, just as a way to um, kind of ex- ex- describe it, not, not literally, mm-hmm. not so literally. When that isn't what it is, it's all one piece. And the whole purpose, or not the whole purpose, but a lot of the purpose of something like channeling or utterances, sacred utterances, light language, whatever, is because there aren't words for it. Because <laughs> the human language is too small for it, right? Yes, yes that's how I feel. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's more expansive. Yeah. Um, it almost... It diminishes the experience sometimes if we try to. Well, it's so interesting. I don't know if I would call my experience in organized religion evangelical per se. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we labeled, if we, if they were labeled as evangelical because my experiences with speaking in tongues were not that way, the way that you've just described. It was much more fluid and it was done like kind of collectively versus, and there, I don't remember any translating. So that's so interesting because I'm not one to translate. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do not. I, yeah, I think it's more expansive than that. The English language is too small. And I think that is because, so I think there's this perception with light language because we've coined it language. And I think that's, that's more because we are verbalizing something that sounds like dialogue or dialect it's not actually for me, and at least in my experience, I can only speak to my experience, is that it's not language. I'm, we're channeling a state. We're channeling mm-hmm. a frequency. We're channeling a resonance. We're actually becoming it and allowing it to move through us. Um, and so it's this, it's this embodiment and this emanation type of quality. And of course, with that, there are you know, there's impressions or feelings or sensations or experiences, but just as like an emotion is more expanded than a thought, we have an emotion, we have a feeling, and then we go, oh, I, I need to label this, I need to contextualize this, I need to call it something so that I can articulate it, so we sort of condense it and chunk it into a thought, and then it becomes a word that we, you know, express, so it just kind of bypasses those steps, and we just we just become one with an experience. That's what it is for me. It's melting into an experience and allowing it to emerge through me and just becoming it. Mm -hmm. Um, It's interesting, the word dialect or dialogue, mm -hmm. dialect, and then there's commune. It's, you know what I mean? They're almost juxtaposed. Yeah. And, And language is more than words, more than this. Like our body is the language of our energy. Yes. It's the subconscious mind. The language of it is our body, our physical reality. And yeah, sure, our words, but the words themselves are only signposts to yeah. the vast and infinite energies that are beneath it that actually brought it forth. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, we the... just assigned meaning to certain sounds, you know, yeah. <laughs> and it, yeah, it's just a signpost. It's just it's just something that directs us to an energy, you know, mm-hmm. um, it's just, yeah, it's just a label. And so it's, it's um, when we're working with whether we want to call it light language or intuitive vocalization work, it's our sacred sound, as I like to call it too, mm-hmm. it's, um, it's working with um, expression. So yeah, expression beyond just verbalizing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's this whole embodied experience. And that's why I think chant and mantra and decree where you actually utilize, you may utilize um, words or syllables that are not from your native language or even that they're from languages that are much older Mm -hmm. than the English language. This English language is pretty young Mm -hmm. because in some of those more ancient, as we covered this in the energy intensive, older languages like Sanskrit and Hebrew, they they have so much packed into just a letter. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, and so you, there's more room and it's understood as such. It's understood that there is so much more packed into it. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the collective consciousness that you're communing with, even though you don't understand, you like stand underneath a specific mm-hmm. meaning, a, a, a limited meaning, that your energy knows that it's connecting to the the egregore or the thought form yes. of that of that more expanded 
com, you know, connection from others who have also communed with the, through those words. But it's a good place to start. But actually even doing chant or decree in your native language is good because when you do it with the repetition and the rhythm, um, you actually start to release the words themselves, release the yeah. signposts. And it's kind of has a similar, uh, has the same effect at the end of the day. Almost. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and actually in the workshop, we will, we're, we're going to talk about mantra and even just affirmation, affirmation in our native tongue, <laughs> you know, yeah. because um, we want to just, we're going to start with just activating the throat chakra and the voice and just like you said, that that center, all, all the paths lead there. It's that center of um, manis- manifestation or synergy or metabolism, taking in energy, metabolizing it, um, producing energy and letting it out. So giving and receiving. So yeah, we're going to talk about, um, I'd actually never heard the egregore, is that egregore term um, yeah. until the energy intensive. So I thought that was really awesome. But yeah, that's how that's how I see like mantra and, you know, this these ancient um you know, words and phrases are so powerful because there's this, yeah, this deeper, more expansive, ancient collective contribution. And so there's all of this, you know, essence and energy in there. And so, yeah, we're going to talk about just opening the throat and starting there, even though the, the uh, workshop is titled light language, and we're going to talk all about light language and what it, what it can be. Um, and how to see it from a from an expanded space. We're really we're going to work on activating just the throat and using that that instrument or that muscle, if you will, in um, in a powerful way in building. And I'm going to guide you through building your own practice with mm-hmm. the throat and just utilizing that. You know, adding it into your personal practice if it isn't a part of it already. So we can just harness the power of that center. Hmm. I feel like I, in case people are like, what is this word egregore? We actually did mention it on an episode a few few back, my episode where I spoke with Damien Eccles, who is a Western ceremonial magician. And so the word egregore is, is a, it means thought form. Thought form is something that is it, it, the interbetween. It is a layering of energies. And so it is not matter. And it is it is not as diffuse as something that is has only been expressed in one layer in the energetic sphere, you may say. So a thought form is like layers of energy. And so it's somewhere to becoming form or becoming information or something like that. And the word egregore is when many different entities have contributed to that thought form. So you have your own personal thought forms, which for an example of that would be beliefs, mm-hmm. but it could be other things that are patterns or I think what even people think if you're, if you're in some kind of mental illness, then it's the other things that are darker and more pronounced. And But then in, in uh, the sense of it be of it a collected egregore, even the face of an archangel, the different things, the way that we experience the archangelic energies, that's an egregore that is the the portal to that archangelic energy. And probably on the other side of that archangelic energy, let's say Michael, is maybe for someone else, Shiva, you know, the pantheon gods and goddesses in the East. So that, but as the humans or entities or whomever are contributing to it, it is creating this kind of collect, this um, consciousness project, collective consciousness activation all throughout. Anyway, that's the way that we, the way that Kelsey and I are talking about it right now. But even words have that because we're all, Mm -hmm. or sounds or utterances Mm -hmm. um, have that quality to it. And so will your workshop. Your workshop is going to be an an egregore. (laughs) It is. Yeah. It's very cool. Yeah. Well, um, so we have the workshop coming up in a, a week or less than two weeks, whenever it is that you're listening to this on the, on, in, in August, we're still in August, right? Yeah, like August of 2020. <laughs> wow, time has been moving so weirdly for me. And we have the the link to um, the workshop for you to read all about it and to register. But I just encourage you to, to well, I encourage you to go to the workshop because it's fantastic. <laughs> Obviously, it's being held on Zoom. Going to be just such a beautiful sacred container to Mm-hmm. just explore and commune yeah but you can also you can just start right now right with your own like utterances in your in your sacred work in your sacred closet closet mm-hmm. right yeah, yeah. It's, you don't even need to be taught you can just start oh it's so beautiful yeah, you can just start, like you can just explore you can just mm-hmm. explore and in it, it you can start with just a mantra or a chant yeah. or an affirmation like i am mm-hmm. and like you said in repetition like mm-hmm. just i am 
I am, I am. And what happens when you just completely surrender to that? And yeah, the words melt away and it's an experience. Um, yeah, you can start right there. Something else I like to do um, that I that I use to kind of open people up to um, the experience or this the concept of embodying or channeling a state. So you know, like when we're in meditation, we're we're in that sort of tranced meditative imaginal mind that experience, right? Um, but what happens when we bring it through, like? like let's say dance or like in vocalization what happens when we actually anchor it from the mind and we bring it down so that it can sink into the body and actually be expressed in a physical way in like a more like literal way <laughs> you know yeah. and so um one of the things one of the exercises i like to share is getting into um getting into your meditation or your trance or whatever it is you do and uh, choosing to embody a particular frequency, whether that be peace or unconditional love or, you know, anything, compassion, something like that. And, you know, communing with that as you normally would in your meditative space and then asking yourself, what does that sound like? Mm. And then just opening your, your voice and just letting that be whatever it is and just letting it be whatever it is. You know, maybe it's a hum, maybe it's, maybe it's a weird guttural sound. <laughs> maybe it's a singing, you know, experience or, Maybe it's just a weird, a weird word, or maybe it's a known word and just playing with allowing that to, to move through you, however it wants to. And that's co-creation. And that's what all, I mean, that's what all communion is. It's co-creating. And so you're just allowing that frequency, that state to really move through your specific energetic architecture and become something new, become a new embodied experience, you know? doesn't have to fit into anything else because it shouldn't. It's not supposed to. It's yours. It's something new that you're co-creating with that energy. Yeah. Wow. I'm just uh, enjoying communing with you and <laughs> all of this that I'm really encouraged to continue my personal practice of sacred resonance <clears throat> and um, my voice is like <laughs> getting tired, of course. It's just <laughs> You know, you using all, I like all of it. I like the chant mantra, I like the decree. And like I say, I feel so vulnerable when I do that, mm -hmm. which is like the, either the, 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 the resonance, you know, the sacred sound of, uh, that's unstructured, call it mm -hmm. light language or tongues. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that's a good thing. Being vulnerable is that new expression of authenticity, a new mm -hmm. transparency that's coming out. Mm -hmm. Whew, yeah. It's powerful, right? Yeah. It gives me chills. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I still feel vulnerable when I'm doing it in front yeah. of people. So like even teaching this workshop is such a huge like step and experience for me and, you know, to just feel that vulnerability and do it anyway. Um, so like, I totally understand. And I think like, that's too, why I feel like working with our voice is such a huge part of building our inner authority and our confidence, this the symbol of our expression, whether it's just language, you know, beyond language, it's just how we express ourselves, how we express source as it manifests through us. Um, you know, this is a power center. And so when we are communing here and even, you know, like you're doing your resonance practice in your vocalizations, like in your person, in your sacred closet, right? No one else yeah. is there yeah. <laughs> and you're feeling vulnerable. It's just, well, you, God, it's just, and cats usually, <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, so it, that's, that's the kind of depth of like, yeah, authenticity and relationship building that I'm about <laughs> that mm -hmm. I like to help people through and um, yeah, just being vulnerable with self and just yeah. allowing ourselves to just be, you know, um, because that's how we, that's how we take it out into the world. You know, we have to, we have to build that trust and that confidence and that sacred medicine and that sacred expression here first in order to be able to really contribute and shine, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It's such a intimate, profound experience. And that's really, um, that's what I want this workshop to be. I want it to be this beautiful container where we can be intimate and <laughs> with, the, with ourselves, with our own energy. And that's really, that's how it's designed to be is this activation and this invitation for people to create that intimacy with themselves. So beautiful. Well, I'm excited about it. 
Kelsey Kinsey White, thank you so much again for coming on. And well, I'll probably see you in a couple of minutes in addition to <laughs> seeing you at the workshop. And so any last words you want to share or any uh, last utterances? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, um, no, it's a two day workshop. We're going to, everything's going to be recorded. So you don't have to be there live for the broadcast. Um, yeah, read all about it. See if it's for you. I would love to have you. I would love to, um, yeah, invite you and um, help activate you into this into this work, into building this practice for yourself, into having this intimate, profound communion with self. Mm -hmm. well, thank you so much. Really looking forward to it. And thanks for coming on. had the best time talking to Kelsey and really truly just communing. I imagine that if you listen or watch this podcast, that this episode, that you also felt that energy. And so the links to Kelsey's workshop, Light Language Workshop, as well as her website are in the description. And if you would like to connect even deeper to, as I discussed in the episode, the egregore of this work because I can truly feel your contribution as you listen or watch. And if you want to be a greater part of it, then you're invited to like, subscribe, share, comment, um, do a review on the podcast. And really, I just am so grateful that you have visited here and shined your light in the way that you are by connecting together. And I feel that resonance. I, I really, I truly mean that. And if you want to expand your soul's emergence, then yeah, check out Kelsey's website and the workshop. I'm going to be there. And um, I just am so grateful to be able to do this. And that gratitude is all due to anyone who will pop by here or subscribe. I, I love you so very much. And I really and truly mean that. That's why that is my tagline, is that that's my intention, is to really just be in gratitude and in love with you. I think that's the way that we actually activate our soul purpose and embody it and allow it to manifest as we walk on the path, each footfall of the journey. Thanks for tuning in. I love you, whoever you are. Mm -hmm.